She's like, but I'm not black, I'm brown. Like she didn't understand the concept of color yet because we've never taught them color, right? And we just thought that we go to school, play with whoever wants to play with you, be friends with whoever wants to be. Hi, recently I interviewed Shanae from America, Gary from the UK, and Stacy from Canada. They shared their perspectives as young black parents. These are the highlights. My first question is just with everything going on, the whole George Floyd situation, Breonna Taylor, how do you black parents feel about it? And I know that stuff where like it's dying down, but I still want to hear how you guys felt about that whole situation going on. I think I'm the one here in America, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I heard about it. Um my sister called me the morning and I cried this morning. I was like, oh my gosh, you know, like what happened? And she told me and I was like, oh, so we just kind of just talked about it for the whole morning. And initially it was shock and disbelief, like really again, you know, this is happening. And so soon after Ahmad got uh, gunned down by those folks, mm -hmm. um, and it was just initially a feeling of feeling overwhelmed and then just feeling kind of paralyzed well like you know what can we really do to to let this stop happening <laughs> yeah 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 so just mainly just feeling very overwhelmed by it obviously not shocked because this is something that's been going on for a while i just mm -hmm. believe that now um it has kind of opened up opportunities for me to talk to my kids about it yeah uh, because we're all home <laughs> <laughs> yeah and so they've been hearing it on the news from us watching it or just even by Terrence and I having conversations around the house. Mm -hmm. So there's been a lot of conversations in my house about it because um, Naya is 11 and it's 10. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit more like, okay, we can kind of have these conversations. We used to have conversations, but really likely now we can kind of open up a little bit more because they are a little bit older. It's something that they're going to have to know about, right? It's something that they are most likely going to experience, which they've already experienced. Surprisingly, at a young age, I've already had to have conversations, but I tried to make it very kid friendly. But now I'm obviously opening up a lot more and being a little bit more vocal about it and yeah. telling them this is why your dad and I have been having these conversations. This is why daddy and I have been saying these things because now they're kind of like, oh, okay, so they people really don't like black people and you know things mm -hmm. like that so they're starting to be very much exposed also like Naya is on TikTok she's 11 yeah so there's obviously a lot of little videos here and there that she's been watching so every time she comes to me she's like did you know I'm like what you're watching your news again on TikTok because obviously like you know she's mm -hmm. hearing a lot more so I think this kind of gives us a gateway to have more conversations around these things obviously devastated by it obviously yes, like she said yeah. before with the we had just gotten over not gotten over but we we're just been kind of dealing with the Ahmad Aubrey mm -hmm. situation and then this right so it's just a lot it's not something that is new mm -hmm. um but it's definitely I feel like people are now like okay enough is enough exactly enough is enough we're all tired of this as you said like uh, it's not nothing for you the people that my mom is asking my family in the garden having the same kind of discussion mm -hmm. and one of the questions was like why everybody's starting now why now people saying oh because of the lockdown and all these things now people have really got time to sit down and take this mm -hmm. but like right now everybody's angry out here now i think it's not nothing new but we just had enough of it now. Yeah. And I yeah. often go out the street. If I go from, if I go out now with like 10 minutes, you are not going to see police stopping black kids on the street. Half of them are bad, and half of them are so like, it's just enough is enough, really. Mm -hmm. now. Topping off what Stacy said about how you had to talk to your daughters about racism mm -hmm. and they came to you about racist encounters they had. Um, I was actually going to ask a question if you guys ever sat down your kids talking about racism. So I know for Shanae, you have a one-year-old daughter. So mm -hmm. <laughs> obviously she hasn't gone to school yet. But I would still love to hear your opinion on how you would um, act upon that. And as well, Gary, I know you have a 15-year-old daughter. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, so if you have any stories on that, and Stacy, I'm sure you probably have <laughs> a lot, so feel free to add on top of that. So whoever wants to, uh, go ahead. Well, I'll start first since I don't have older kids like you mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. um, like uh, Bethany said, my daughter is one. She's like one and a half. And Although we can't have those conversations and she's not aware of what's going on in the world around her uh, socially, 
it's still, I still had the thought as a parent of, okay, you know, this is the reality of the world that we're in, and how am I going to have these conversations with her when she gets older? Um, and I have put a lot of thought in it, and of course, nothing is ever as smooth as you kind of theorize it. I hopefully want to start by first instilling just a sense of, just a sense of identity and pride that comes with it. Um, her father is Nigerian. My husband's Nigerian. I'm Jamaican, so she has a, you know, like a really great mix. Like she is black, black. Like, you know, there's, there's no question about that. Yeah. And she has a Nigerian name. And I, you know, I want her to go into American schools and, you know, say it proudly and make sure people, you know, pronounce it correctly and, you know, like not, not have an alternate name or anything like that. And I think just in those small ways, I can instill like, this is who you are in the world. You're a black girl and this is how people are going to see you. And this is how you kind of carry yourself so that people see that, you know, you're proud of yourself and, um, and hopefully in those ways, just like through the positives, we can uh, start to instill those things, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Makes a lot of sense, yeah. Um, well, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Well, for me, I believe that it starts at home, for sure. Definitely. I'm having conversations at home. So it started for me when I had kids. It was kind of like, okay, now I have kids. I got kids to raise. So now I got to start instilling some values in them. So the, what, the first thing I actually stopped um, was I, I used to process my hair, perm. I had like highlights, colors, and stuff like that. Like that, I like cut that off literally like years ago. So now I was 11, so it might have been probably... Uh, 10 years ago or so that I haven't like processed my hair or done any of that stuff um, because I said to myself if I'm going to teach my kids about you know loving yourself loving who you are you know natural beauty all of these things but I'm explaining this to you and telling you this but I have long straight blonde hair what am I I mean not that I've ever worn long straight blonde hair but what I'm saying is what am I instilling so I'm telling you love yourself love your hair love your natural hair love everything about you you're beautiful all these things but I'm not reflecting really what I'm telling my kids so that was the one thing I obviously had to put a stop to at first. So now yeah. obviously like I'm natural, like I don't, I haven't processed my hair, I haven't done any of that. Yes, I do wear like, you know, braids and stuff like that, but that's still a representation of us and who we are. So I don't consider that anything sort of outside of the norm. So that's the one thing I started first. And then I know um, we thought eventually at some point we would have to talk to our kids about it. But I remember when my daughter was in grade two, she came home one day from school and she said, um, this boy called me a black girl. And she was like crying, she was devastated, but because she didn't understand, she's like, but I'm not black, I'm brown. Like she didn't understand the concept of color yet because we've never taught them color, right? And we just thought that we go to school, play with whoever wants to play with you, be friends with whoever wants to be, be friends with you, that kind of stuff. So we've never really instilled anything like you're black and you're whatever. Eventually we knew we eventually had to do that, but it wasn't something we thought we had to until she came home and she said that to us. So then we had to explain to her what the color black means. It's not necessarily like, black you know what I mean like uh like the color color black it's our you know our culture or nationality blah, blah, blah. but she still obviously couldn't grasp that yet because she was still young grade two you're still about like seven six or seven mm -hmm. so as time goes by like you know um we're slowly trying to explain to them now they're a lot older but there was still a lot of situations where she was called like you know she was told her hair looks like I don't even know, but they've been had. They've been like comments here and there. Um, mm -hmm. and we predominantly live in a East Asian, uh, like East Asian neighborhood. So there's yeah. a lot of um East Asian, and I feel like sometimes they instill some things in their kids as well that they probably shouldn't. Because I remember my daughter even telling me that her friend told her her dad said she's not allowed to have black kids at her birthday party and stuff like that. She was in grade three. That she was like eight, yeah. right? She yeah. was eight yeah. years oh old. God. So I'm thinking, what are we teaching our kids? Like we live in a multicultural, like, I mean, we, we're in GTA. So we're in Toronto, like outside of Toronto. So we're in the most multicultural part of Canada, mm -hmm. right? Like yeah. everywhere you go, there's us, there's everybody. You see everybody where we are, but predominantly like where I am, where Bethany and I are, mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of East Asians. Yeah, mm -hmm. right? Correct? Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, um, yeah. we really had to like instill a lot of those things in, in our kids about hair. Like the hair is a big one, right? Mm -hmm. Because like, you know, obviously you all know we don't have long flowing whatever hair. Not all of us, right? Depending yeah. on, on whatever. Now I'm saying we don't have that. We do have black people with 
that type of hair depending on whatever race mm -hmm. but for most part right so the hair has been like a huge thing at school um they've experienced stuff where kids would talk in their language right like at recess right and she mm -hmm. would feel so out of place because she she thinks that they were talking about her and so i've had to like explain all these things to her about like your, our hair and how beautiful we are and we're kind of like the only culture like we're the only people that can braid our hair straighten our hair put our hair in buns put our hair in, like we have so many verses we can do so much with our mm -hmm. hair and so talking about that i find that the hair thing has been was like a big thing um, they're past that now. They're loving, you know, the hair, the hair. They're loving the natural stuff. Yeah. Learning how to appreciate. So I think it starts at home and just letting them know. Mm. Like, first of all, you have to let them believe in themselves and start loving themselves, right? Mm. That's yeah, where it starts. Definitely. Once they have that, then the confidence level is like way up there. And I feel like my daughter's confidence are like way up there. They feel they fear no foe, right? At this point. So they can walk into anything, they can do anything. Mm -hmm. Um, they're pretty confident because we make them confident, you know. Um, their dad tells them daily. Like every time their dad calls them, they're like, Okay, daddy, are you gonna tell us that we're beautiful, right? Um, so <laughs> you know it's so just important. instilling that at home yeah. it's important to start at home because when you don't start at home they don't have that confidence and i feel like the confidence level has to be there for them to appreciate who they really are if they don't have that confidence they're going to feel like it's just going to be draining right for them all the time because they're going to face so many things and they need to just walk through those things man mm -hmm. um so i would say that's one of the things that we're doing as parents absolutely yeah mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Well, that's like growing up in London is quite like multicultural where we have lots and lots and our parents always install it as well as like white kids as well as so, like you're always gonna have to work twice as hard mm -hmm. and this and everything mm -hmm. but like growing up and our school was like say say about I would have to say 20 say 25 percent of them would have been like black or ethnic minor so we had a class and then like we was all mixed we never really see, when we was younger we saw color but everybody was cool yeah yeah uh, then i yeah. can remember like uh, i must have been about i think about would be about 12 or 11 12. i don't know if you know alex haley's roots have you heard of that alex haley's roots it's like a series mm. tells you like about slavery back in the day and yeah, like yeah. that actually came on the tv i don't think they would put that on the tv now i'm talking a little while ago just back in like late 70s or like mm -hmm. early 80s yeah and like when this came on, Alex Haley's Roots came on, is about slavery and black people back in the day. And the next day at school, <laughs> all the black kids <laughs> was like, did you see that yesterday? And then, because we all kind of, we just like grouped up together. Mm -hmm. Like, whereas we was all spread out, it was all of a sudden, all the black kids, like say about 30 kids, there might be four or five black kids in there. Like, we're all sitting closer now and we're all like, we really got each other connecting the dots yeah <laughs> and it did it did because it's quite brutal when you watch it and at that age as well this is the first time i ever knew about like race this for me this is like because i never really experienced it where mm. we live is not too bad but after seeing that it's like everything I've, my whole perspective changed so i started to see all sorts of different things that i'm noticing a lot of little things now and it's like and i actually asked my parent my mom about it it's like I was, I was talking to her about it Mm. and like I was quite surprised what she said because she said growing up in Jamaica they didn't teach them much about slavery and these type of things mm. and like I, when she told me that I, I asked her again probably like about six years sorry probably about okay. six years ago and when she said that to me that yep she really knew about it the first time while we was watching it together I didn't know whether to laugh or cry I couldn't believe that mm. she didn't really know about it but like yeah mm. it's, it's it's I don't know it's mm. just a bit much. It's a bit much. Yeah, yeah. But like, even with this, as I'm saying, watching this, I even had a discussion with my friend today. I think as my daughter is of an age now, I would like to actually sit down and watch the whole of these roots with her, and mm. like, because she knows yeah. of her history and everything. But this will highlight a lot of different things. Yeah, mm. teach them about this. Yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah. Sadly, right? You have to like. Um, I you forgot to. to mention. I remember when I moved here from Jamaica. Obviously, I was about ten. 11 at the time and my mom didn't really say too much she basically just said she's like first of all like the whole school so before i went to school her her instruction to me was you know black parents they don't really give you too much they just give you, <laughs> just give you like you're reading between the line all this so i'm like okay so she's like to be black in this country you already have one strike against you and she's like to be black and stupid oh boy it's over and that was all she said and i'm like what does that mean 
Um, but eventually, right? You over time understand what that means, right? Yeah, so you, block, yeah. you already have that strike, right? And then you black, you're black, yeah. and you don't have an education, you don't have anything going for you. Then you really have nothing, right? Is mm-hmm. what she was saying. But yeah, she's correct. Oh, sorry. I was just gonna say. I think in general, it's just being intentional when it comes to parenting our young black kids. And our parents may or may not have been because I think we all kind of explain our parents are from Jamaica or at least we're from Jamaica and for some reason it's 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 not as heavy there although blacks are in Jamaica because of slavery they're brought over by slaves but for some reason I get the discrimination and, and, and all that wasn't as heavy on their minds so for us now we have to be very intentional with our kids for sure no I can't help but also mention about this um thing called the wind rush generation yeah you know for sure okay yeah i i don't know why i recently found out about it and i've never heard about it what is it wind rush wind oh rush yeah <laughs> yeah see that's the thing not a lot of us really know about it so yeah. i kind of want to get that out there uh yeah. i believe it was back in the maybe the 70s or the 60s when the uk invited mm-hmm, they invited jamaicans to live over overseas and then basically i believe in around uh 20 in 2018 or 2017 the children that left with their parents or their grandparents to come overseas got letters saying that they're now they're like illegal immigrants and they have to go back when they worked and just lived their whole life in the uk and did everything to be you know be a citizen so um, i just was so shocked by that and to know that some of them were actually deported and yeah. I believe eleven died after a few, a few yeah. months. Gary or so can or speak you. on that. Yeah, he knows yeah, a little yeah. bit about that. Yeah. I remember I when it was happening. You had sent me some articles and stuff on it too, Gary. Yeah. Um, so he was. Yeah, I, I knew about it, but didn't know a whole lot. But Gary had was like forwarding me a lot of things around that time when it was yeah. happening. I don't know if you remember. So I guess you can speak a little bit yeah. more on that. Yeah, yeah please go ahead. Sure. So it's not. It wasn't. It wasn't also just the kids. It was the parents who came as well. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they've been working, they've paid mm-hmm. their taxes. Yeah. They've all been paying these taxes for all these years. And so, like, for them to get, like, their health care and all things, they've paid their taxes, so they've got all this paperwork. But then when they've retired, or, like, say, 40, 50 years later, they've said, like, oh, have you got your passport now? And, like, some of them have never traveled, they haven't got it. So they just wanted them out. This is just despicable. There has, there's been some recently now, some good, like, MPs, member of parliaments, who's standing up. Standing up. Good. There. I'm not sure if you heard of Diane Abbott. She's mm-hmm. like a high MP over here, and she's really taken on. Actually, she's done a lot for these Windrush generation. You may have wow. sent me something about her a while back. Yeah. Like a, yeah, when they were. Yeah, yeah. That's really good. I think oh. she was actually the first black lady uh, member of parliament. Actually, some people don't like her, <laughs> but you have to give her respect because she's the first mm-hmm. black lady to actually go in this whole establishment, which predominantly white people mm-hmm. and actually mm-hmm. stand up. And talk. Yeah. So whatever little bit she did, it's more than anybody ever done anyways. And it's wow. very, yeah. it's a very sensitive tough subject for like a lot of the elder black people out here. Exactly. Very yeah. Very, very, yeah. Mm. I was so sad to hear about that. That honestly broke my heart. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes I know. Sometimes people only look to like America, whole racism, but racism occurs in every single country. If I can know, I I know something that it just like hits me randomly every now and then. Okay, black people are from Africa, right? Mm. Every black person Mm. originates in Africa, and it's like, but black people are all over the map. And the original reason we're all over the map is because of the slave trade, like everywhere mm-hmm. in South America and the Caribbean. And yeah. like when I think about it sometimes it just overwhelms me, like, oh my gosh, for ages, black people were just treated as just the lowest in mm-hmm. civilization. And yeah. it's, it's very overwhelming to just think about that. And it's just yeah. crazy to think that it's 2020 and we're still fighting still. for these yeah. things. So I'm just thinking, yeah. what, what's happening? But what I what I like about what's happening now, and I've heard several activists have said it, like, you know, when they were marching back in the day, it was more just like a lot. Now you see a variety of everybody. And I think everyone has kind of caught on and they're kind of like, listen, man, enough is enough. Mm-hmm. Um, because even in Toronto, you're like Vancouver, Toronto, they had like a huge march yesterday. And man, like, I mean, I could probably count the black people on my hands. There is not a whole lot of, like, I mean, there is 
a lot, but I'm just saying, I think a lot of the communities are, everyone's tired at this point. I don't think we've ever seen anything like this. So I think it's really good. And even for you, Bethany, like, mm. I'm happy, right? To see like young black people are actually getting, they're catching on to what's going on. They're mm. kind of, we need to know mm. more, right? We need to really read more about it, where we're from, who we are, because we are really, really strong, educated, smart. Like we have so much Definitely. going for us, but they have taken so much away out of our culture and just make us think, oh, we're just slaves or we're whatever. We, mm. No, but we're way more than just what they portray us to be. Yeah, yeah. And the fact that you're doing these little, you know, YouTube mm. stuff and whatever, like it's amazing, right? It's really yeah, good yeah, yeah. Um, to see like young, <laughs> yeah, to see young black kids yeah. stepping up, right? Like yeah. I feel like we need to get that stereotype out of the way where it's like okay yeah you're young and mm-hmm. young and black and pregnant or you're mm-hmm. and black and drug dealer and you're yeah like, 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 you, right mm-hmm. um like i i mean i can say a lot about like you and you know your sister like you guys are, are doing like i'm just speaking on what i know right um yeah. i can only speak for you like you being in your university like rachel mm-hmm. having completed university and wants to be a doctor and yeah whatever, and all these different things so like i see it in my family and um i'm sure there are other families as well who are very successful and are doing what they need to do so i feel like that stereotype really we need to really start letting that go yeah and um really doing things like this like what you're mm-hmm. doing which is mm-hmm. like, yeah thank you yeah. thank you yeah i just okay. want to show everyone like let's just talk about these topics even though of with George Floyd and the Breonna Taylor situation, I mean, her the police officers still need to be arrested. But since yeah, they still need yeah, to be arrested. Taylor, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but seeing how things kind of died down, I want to show people like we're not going to stop talking yeah. about this. It wasn't yeah. just a phase, you know. Yeah. This yeah. is something we need to keep on going. Mm-hmm. So. Me too. And I've yeah. been seeing people commenting like it's no longer black versus white. Like this mm-hmm. is everybody versus racist. Like yeah. look, get it together. This needs to stop. It's exactly. ridiculous. Exactly. Like they honestly, I feel like people have caught on now. I know it's, it has died down a bit, but I think that it's everywhere you read or you go, there's there's something, right? Mm-hmm. Even in the schools here, right? Yeah. We're also having a lot of those conversations in the schools here where. Oh. Um, you know, they have shown that there has been racism where, you know, there's been less, uh, the graduation rate for Black kids, suspension rate for Black kids or more. Um, they have been talking a lot about, you know, even streaming kids, like when kids are coming out of grade eight, going to high school, the classes they're being, they're being streamed into, they're being streamed into college courses as opposed to university courses. So when they're finished um, high school, you know, they kind of have no choice but to either go to that college, college route because that's where they're being they're being streamed into so I think a lot of parents you know I, everyone's catching on to what's happening and people are now being held accountable for these things and they should mm-hmm. I think it's we're in a honestly we're in a very good step in the right direction I think yeah. we just need to keep it going keep the momentum going and not just like okay you know I think people need to be on top of people people need to be accountable um, as parents, we need to be involved in our kids' lives and in, in their schools. Um, I know your daughter is still young, but at the moment she hits school, we need to be be there, showing oh, yeah. up for our kids. Let the teachers oh, yeah. know that, you know what? We're black, but we're there. And as parents, we need as yeah. black parents, we also need to do better um, in terms of showing up and being there for our children. Um, I'm in the school system, and sometimes that's one of the biggest flaws where we're not showing up for parent interviews. You know, we're not showing up for those things. And I think that sometimes when people realize that there's no interest at home, then they're also not putting any interest in, in your kids either. Yeah, they're not. So you mm-hmm. need to be showing up for your kids no matter what. Like, it doesn't matter what's happening at my kids' school. We're there, Terrence and I. Mm-hmm. And um, I remember once, Nivia, she was like in grade three, and her teacher's like, oh, are your parents coming for whatever? She's like, my parents have never missed. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> she's like, she's in grade three, right? She was in grade mm-hmm. three at the time. And she's like, oh, yeah, my parents are <laughs> Accomplished. Like my parents have never missed an yeah, open house, exactly. right? So that that and that gives them confidence because they know that yeah. we're not missing that. Like we're there yeah. as parents. Yeah. So I think it's just it's all about the confidence you're instilling at home, mm. the confidence level about everything, right? She could tell her teacher, yeah. even though we didn't return the permission forms yet, but her teacher was like, "Are your parents coming?" And she was like, "Yeah, my parents are coming." So my parents have never missed missed an open house right so it's just all those little things where as parents and you know individuals we need to be stepping up to the plate also as as black people as well is also making sure that you know we're making holding people accountable for for everything that they're doing whether in the workplace and schools whatever it might be right Mm -hmm. yeah yeah 
Yeah. Yeah. When you talked about the whole school system, there's definitely yeah. racism yeah. up in there. Yeah. there I can't yeah. touch too much on that. Cause, you know, I, I, I know. I know you can't. I know you can't. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I just want to put that out there. There definitely is. I remember one time in like literally in the art class, we're making a clay uh like a clay person a clay face of our parent and i was doing my yeah. mom's and then uh i was doing her lips and then my white art teacher i was like back in like grade six and wow. he was just saying oh i think it's supposed to be um a bit bigger or some make the lips bigger I was, but i was a kid so i didn't really i wasn't that phased oh. by it you know <laughs> you know i don't like, think i told you're my saying that when you're younger, so yeah like as you're saying when you're younger you're not looking at it like this Actually, my yeah. mom has still got some of my school reports from when I was young. Mm-hmm. And when you're reading it now, older, knowing a lot more, I think, I, you, I just don't know how they could write a report like that for a child. I'm sure the white mm-hmm. kids' was a report cards wasn't like that, whether they was good or bad. Mm-hmm. Reading it now is quite shocking with all the political correctness and everything. You're mm-hmm. thinking like, the audacity wow. they had to write of a child like this of that age. Yeah. Yeah, and I never like told my mom about it until like years later. So <laughs> I know. And then like when I told her, she's like, oh my god, like she would like cuss that guy off. <laughs> you know? Oh man. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Like it's it's very it's very um sometimes it's very subtle, but even in like the colors and stuff, like I mean, I think I think now every classroom has to have a certain color scheme in terms of browns because yeah. their browns are usually like some sort of peach yeah. and we're like like i'm like i'm not peach like why why yeah, am i co- why am yeah. i being colored peach like no no we need to have like you know mm-hmm. so i think now every classroom has like a whole color a whole color scheme of brown yeah yeah, yeah. you need to be able to represent everyone like how's my mm-hmm. daughter bringing home a painting of me looking peach like i'm not peach. or how are they coloring <laughs> Whatever. So I think it's just, and I think these are the little things though that starts early that you kind of have to look into, right? Yeah. I know it's kind of simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. like your kid has a picture of you that they see, but then they go to school and they're trying to make a picture of you, and there's nothing that they can really use to represent you as a parent or their sister or their sibling or any other siblings or your parents. Mm. Like you know, like that needs to. I know it seems simple, but that's. It's like that mental thing from a young age that's kind of like instilled mm-hmm. in their mind, right? Yeah. About who's superior, who is not. Who is, I, I know, like, it's just weird, but yeah. yeah. Crazy the things we have to I teach our children. Remember, <laughs> I also remember at school, like, when we were going to school, now, the majority of the teachers is white. You never really had a black teacher, but yeah. you would get, like, um, a black substitute teacher, like, yeah. if your teacher mm-hmm. wasn't there. There was a black guy, I still remember his name to this day, Mr. Lindsay. And when he came in, like, whether you like the subject or not, all the black kids paid attention. There's a big difference when you have a black teacher. Yeah. Like, in the one lesson, the one, the what if he takes you from one lesson, you've learned more than with him in that one lesson, then you've probably learned for, like, so probably like two weeks yeah. or, like, could, could even be for the month with mm-hmm. other teacher, like. It makes a huge difference. Very much so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Representation mm-hmm. matters hundred mm-hmm. percent. My daughter was so excited when she started grade six and came home and found out her principal was a black lady. Let me tell you oh. the excitement. She was like, Mom, guess what? My principal's a black lady. She always says like these positive yeah. quotes on the announcements. And yeah. when we walk around the hallway, she gives us high fives. So it's like she's gone right through, you know, kindergarten to grade six. She's never had yeah. um, she's never seen that. So for her it was exciting to yeah. see that like her principal is. Yeah. as black. So I, I I mean I know it's to some people it's like, okay, really, but it's representation is a lot. Like, you know, when kids it's see someone that looks like them in mm-hmm. a place of authority or somewhere like that, it's like, oh, Okay, like that kind of gives them an insight. Like I can be a, a principal or yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever, right? Like I don't know, right? So you're right. Uh, representation really, really matters. And so she was excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know okay. that feeling. Yeah, yeah. yeah she's excited. Yeah. <laughs> so one of my other questions is if ever, if you guys ever had faced racism yourself. So if you have any stories on that, Stacy has a whole list. <laughs> she pulls up. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, if you where ever. Do where, I know, where to start, where to start <laughs> but you know. I love things, oh, especially like for me growing up, there's a lot of things where you probably just overlook. It's so it's so common. You're like, mm-hmm. something you just like, try to just rise above it and just get, yeah. you don't want to be ignorant all the time because mm-hmm. if you was to watch it, it's like, even me on the way to work in the morning, before I even reach to work, 
I could be in so much argument for getting to fight. So then, just on the way to work, like if you're traveling on like um, London Underground, the tube or stuff like this, so much incidents that things happen, you could be arguing all the time. Sometimes, just for your own peace, sometimes you try to just like overlook some of these things for like, I don't even know where to start with all the races. <laughs> you know, over here. Yeah. There was a time uh, my sister and I were driving um, in town and we, it was the first time, I think it was like a restaurant or something we were trying to find for the first time. So we didn't know exactly where we were going and we we're using the GPS, but for some reason we made the wrong turn and we were trying to like turn around and a car drove by and they just shouted out, it's because you're black. And although that might seem like not a huge deal, it was a huge deal. Like we were shaking. Mm -hmm. And reason why is, and this is just, you know, after I've been able to really think about it is for them to attribute my skin color to the reason why we're lost in making a U-turn. Like that's, you know, like those two things don't yeah. line up. Yeah. And it, it really, it's exhausting knowing that people see you and they immediately start making assumptions just on your skin color. It's like, there's so much more to me. There's so much more to anyone than that. And I know for me, um, I really feel racism or, or, just, or just the burden of being black sometimes, if that's the right phrasing, in that, you know, like, I'm a professional. I work in the mental health field. I'm a licensed therapist. And although I have that professional title, you know, I've gone to school, I have my master's, all these things, no one really can know that. Let's say I'm going out to the store, I'm just wearing like sweatpants and a t-shirt. I'm just being comfortable, but the assumption is going to be this person is not a professional um, because I'm black and I'm in sweat. So like in order to kind of be treated like, you know, you're a professional, you have to kind of always kind of dress the part. Whereas you can have a white person and just because they're wearing um, shorts and a t-shirt on a Saturday, the assumption is not automatically there that they're not a professional. I, I don't know if you guys have ever kind of experienced that thinking and it's, it's just like a burden, like really like, you know, just, <laughs> just to be seen in a certain light, you always have to kind of carry yourself in a certain way. You can't just relax and be doing like everyone else. So much things like, uh, if I'm late for work and I was running down the road to go to work and there's a white lady in front of me, I would automatically just know like, okay, just cross over the road and continue running. Don't even be like running up behind like a white lady. <laughs> and I can remember the other time, there's another time I was just driving with my friend going shopping and police pulled us over and he said, um, he asked us our age, I think my friend was like 30 at the time. And he said, oh, have you ever been arrested? And he said to him, no, I've never been arrested. The police was like, what? You're black and you're putting you've never been arrested? He, really? He just couldn't believe it. Yeah, he's like, mm -hmm. I don't know where to start. There's so much type of, all little things to big things like that. Mm -hmm. Every day. Mm -hmm. yeah. I wouldn't say it's bad, bad. It's not like, oh, I don't know where it affects me, but there is a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. I think there's a lot, but I feel I don't know if we've been taught to overlook it or what it is. But now that I'm thinking okay. back, there's been so many <laughs> situations where I'm like, oh man, that wasn't that wasn't okay, or you know. But like I said, I can't. I remember one particular incident for sure. I knew it was because I was black, and I remember leaving work one day and I went to the mall, and I used to work at Zellers, like at a diner part time. And so I had, was wearing, I usually wear like a white shirt. So because I was going to the mall, I took off my shirt and I was wearing an extra shirt underneath. So the shirt was white. I walked into the store and I'm just like looking around, browsing, um, doing my thing. And then all of a sudden I walked out and the, some, the, somebody from the store walked up behind me and she's like, well, can I have my shirt? And I was like, your shirt? She's like, yeah, I have a white shirt in your bag. And I was like, I don't have anything in my bag. So she walked me out to the mall, like, read the whole thing. And I'm like, I don't have any shirt in my bag. First of all, I've never been stole. I'm like, okay, I'm like, blown away. I'm coming from work. Mm -hmm. And so, anyways, by the time whatever security guard and everything came, um, she's like, yeah, she took my shirt. My shirt's in my bag, in her bag. Blah, blah, blah. Came, opened my bag, took the shirt out with my work shirt. Feel stupid. Tried to apologize. Um, I went home. I told my mom. My mom was mad so like we went on it got like mm -hmm. a whole legal went the whole legal aid 
way, yes. um, did the whole thing. But I mean, it was like a huge process. But what I'm trying to say is that you didn't see me. You saw the shirt probably coming out of my bag, assumed that I stole something, which I didn't. Um, so that was one of the biggest things. And then that kind of, that affected me for quite some time because like I've never stolen. It was never something that, I mean, you guys know how we were brought up, right? So mm -hmm. it's like, that's not really in my in my mind like I would never do that mm -hmm. so that was one of the biggest things but I think we've been taught to like overlook a lot of things yeah. I'm sure if we look back there's probably been a lot of instances where we were either racially profiled or yeah. because we you know I'm sure but because we were kind of taught eh, whatever you know um just kind of be polite you know keep on moving do the whole night I think we've just kind of done that but now yeah. we're older I feel like we are now able to recognize and we're teaching our kids obviously different generation is different right I'm not telling my kids to hold back. I'm teaching them so they understand when they've experienced something that is not okay, they need to let me know and we need to deal with it, right? Mm -hmm. That's what it's always been and it's always going to be that way. So, um, yeah, I think it, it happens. And even I remember when Terrence and I were getting married, um, I was asked, like, when they're like, oh, yeah, like, does he have any kids? And I'm like, no, and they're like, oh, is he black? And I'm like, yeah, he's black, he's Jamaican. No children. Mm. That's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, like just questions like that. And I'm thinking, like, seriously, are people really like for real asking these type of questions? And I'm like, yeah, I know only... there's that stereotype of most, but that's not all the case, right? Um, so yeah. anyway, it's just really weird stuff. But mm -hmm. um thinking back, you're like, really? Like someone really asked you yeah. ask that questions or just anything in general, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah. <laughs> It's been a lot. I'm sure we've, we've all experienced something or yeah. the other that we maybe overlooked and not even, you know, took note of it. I, th I think the hair, the hair thing is very important, especially when our kids are in schools where there aren't as many uh, children that look like them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because, yeah, I mean, I know growing up, I was made fun of because of my hair and it was crazy because I'd leave the house feeling so confident like you know my mom just styled yeah. it I remember I yeah. used to love like two ponytails and like a big afro puff and it was just so cute and I remember going to school and the white kids would like laugh at me uh, uh, about my 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 hair and the way it looks and I know my sister got made fun of a lot. And so I know with my daughter, I've already been starting thinking about, okay, you know, I, I got to instill in her a love for her hair, kind of like what Stacey was saying, just like, pick it up. Whenever we do her hair, like, just tell her so much, oh, you are so beautiful. And, you know, just look how your hair looks, just really build up that self-confidence so when they do go in school you know they they have that to carry with them because yeah. as parents we're not going to be there every single second yeah. so they the, themselves have to have it within them to you know build themselves up mm -hmm. yep. even what Stacy was saying about since she had like um, it now, like she didn't color her hair and all these type of things because a lot of I know a lot of them I think even some of my nieces they wanted their hair straight straight and all this and all this now. Mm -hmm. And I think that was more of an issue with them with their hair over here. But yeah. now I think there's a lot of afros out here now. They're kind of private. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Afros are lot, so Also, I see a big difference. My niece, she's actually downstairs, actually. She actually goes to, like, a church school, and it's predominantly black kids. And, like, uh, her confidence is, like, so her confidence is, like, through the roof. Sometimes I'm, like, <laughs> But with the black and everything, her hair all this. I think black school over England is very necessary for her. It's well, one that I can just see a big difference in her and a lot of other kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I find to me, I find the hair thing was a huge thing for us. And so we, like I said, I've dealt with that by being, leading by example. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm leading by example. And now my kids are, they love their hair. They're always want like sometimes yeah, when I bring it, they're like, no, can we do puffs? Like they love their natural hair. They're at that point now, ten and eleven. Yeah, that's good. I'm happy about that. We're even at the point where we're talking about locks, right? Because I feel like yeah. we've been talking about it for about a year. We've been talking about it for about a year now, but I just yeah. I feel like it's something that we want to. I want to do it. Um, yeah. I would love for them to do it. Um, because I somehow I feel like that is the it's a natural state. I feel like her, her hair grows in that state natural. all the time. Yeah, that's right. I've, known that I've known to have locked their hair in like literally like their hair is like down to you. I'm like, how, right? Yeah. So like yeah, our texture and our, our type of hair, it doesn't do well with like the tension and the pulling and the whatever. Like, yeah. When you lace it free flowing, like that's how it grows. 
And so we're at some point where we want to make that change. I'm going to go first. And then um, have the girls follow me after. But I just think that representation matters so much. So like starting with the inside and the outside, right? Um, Mm -hmm. So I just, my biggest thing is that I just need their confidence to be at an all-time high at all times. If I feel like once they're confident, that honestly will kind of take them through whatever, right? Yeah. Uh, sometimes they come home from school and they'll say stuff. And they're like, yeah. yeah, but it didn't bother me, mom. Like they said this or she said, he said that or she said this, but you know, it just didn't bother me. I just like, you know what? I keep moving. Cause I always tell them like at a young age, you don't need to have like 10 friends. If you have five and they're five yeah. of your great friends, that's, that's good. good, right? You don't need a whole entourage of people. Just hang out with the people who want to hang out with you and the people who want, cause you know, when you get to that certain age, friends become like, well, she's not talking to me or this person's mad at me. Or I'm like, don't go to school and be consumed. I said, I'm sending you to school for two reasons, two reasons only. And one of the main ones is you're going to school to learn. That's the most thing. I said, and in the process of learning, you will make friends. Those are the only two reasons that you're going to school for. I said, have these people you're never really going to see again. And the one thing I started early was having them getting involved in like leadership opportunities at their schools. I said, because when you're involved in things, especially a lot of those clubs and stuff are during recess, you don't have time to get caught up in any kind of girl Mm -hmm. drama. You have no time for none of that stuff. Because when it was happening, guess what you were doing? You were a part of the green club. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) <laughs> that's true I was just like, I was like, when this was going on you were doing whatever it might be so you know i said taking on leadership roles in your school it starts early and now they're getting so it's kind of starting to make sense to them now because naya's like oh mom that's why you want us i said yeah because other kids need to see kids like you in roles like those in the school yeah. I said, so if other kids are not, even if other kids aren't doing it, at least they're seeing one person in their school. You can't have one, one um, nationality, like just one person being this, that, that. I mean, somebody else needs to look like you doing something. And I said, if you're that one, then guess what? You're going to be that one. So I said, you need to take on these roles at school, man. You need to, kids need to see you as somebody they can look up to. And saying this and saying that. You know, with Naya, she did get a, a citizenship award or whatever for her school. That's kind of there. And every time her sister walks by, her sister tells her friend, oh, that's my sister's name. And she's, you know, whatever. So she's yeah. so proud and whatever, right? Yeah. She's like, yeah, that's my sister's name up there. But she doesn't go to that school anymore. Yeah. The school anymore. So um, I think that's like a huge thing. I know leadership is like simple when you're young. Like if you're just like a part of the green club or you're just like doing something. But I think it's just those little things that kind of build, right? As they get older, it's more opportunities for them. And they kind of get developed, you know, the speaking, being able to speak in front of crowds and doing those things. It starts like, yeah, like grade one, man. Go pick up all the recycling stuff. <laughs> doesn't matter what it is. As long as you're doing something, right? That's called being a leader, right? So yeah, yeah. Just, just take on stuff. Be busy, right? And that will help you out. Mm-hmm. That's great. Right? Yeah, That's my dad true. always told me to be the leader, not the follower, and still tells yeah, me today. <laughs> sometimes it's hard, don't get me wrong. Sometimes it's hard because you yeah. want to run with the main crowd or you want to do what you want to do. But yeah. um, be a leader, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, only make you stronger. That's it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, my last question is How are you guys feeling for the future of your Black children? If things will like finally change, if you think racism will die down, just uh, I know, just like how you guys feel about it. What do you think? Initially, in like like at first thought, I feel overwhelmed. Like oh my gosh, mm-hmm. this you know my child's gonna have to face all of this. My child, no matter how well I raise her, no matter the values I instill in her, someone's gonna see that she's black and make judgments off of that. You know, before again to know her, but. If I take a step back and look at it, I, I ultimately feel hopeful about the future of my child because I think there are a lot more people that are with us, like with yeah. the Black community, than there are against. And um, progress is being made. We're not all together where we need to be, but progress is being made. And um, I was actually having a conversation with my mom recently about you know how we need to see more black people in positions of power because that is what, you know, creates rules and regulations and policies and all this. And, you know, she was saying, well, we need to see more. And I said, well, you know, take a look, you know, take a step back and look and see it's, it's not until recently in 
larger world history that we've even been able to be in positions of power. And so it's going to take a while for us to kind of catch up. But I do think our younger, you know, the generation coming up, we're, you know, going to college and we're getting in, we're becoming lawyers and we're becoming educators and we're becoming medical professionals. And we're slowly but surely you know, bring ourselves up and being in those positions of power. And I only see it increasing more and more. So I know, you know, 20 years from now when my daughter's in college, I think it'll be a bit of a brighter world mm-hmm. is, is on my hope because there'll be more of us in place of power. We can make decisions and, you know, make more influence. Same. I believe that um, I feel hopeful for my kids. Um, I do have four. So, um, I have, I do have, I do feel very hopeful because I think that we are in a step in the right direction with everything. We have a long way to go, obviously, but I think that with everything that's going on right now, we're getting there. And I think that the generation now and the generation coming are definitely, they're going to be better, better than the generation before. Us, yeah, right? definitely. Um, yeah. And I think that having um, having our kids modeling that as they're getting older and seeing more like um, seeing more people of color in position of um, leadership, that will kind of create that space for them. I know for my girls, believe it or not, like Bethany and Rachel are you guys are like my kids are always going to be like Rachel. I'm going to be like Bethany. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> having their co- just even seeing their cousins. You know what I mean? So I think it's just it's just I think the generation like it's just what you're modeling right what you're modeling before so they're seeing this yeah, you know, their siblings are going to see them and I think it's whatever it is that you that you're modeling in your family in your home and your whatever and your your kids are able to see that because they really do look up to you and Rachel a lot mm-hmm. um in terms of like being their cousin mm-hmm. and you know Rachel, I want to be a doctor like Rachel. I want to draw like Rachel. I want to do this like Bethany. My hair looks like Bethany. My hands look like Bethany. Like, you know, all these, all these things, right? I'm just yeah. like, okay. But, like, um, what about me? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. They want to be like you. So, like, the other day, Naya was like, this is my, look at my hands. This is looking like Bethany. Like, um, so, like I said, it's just, um, it's, it's, I'm hopeful. Um, and uh, I think that we're in the step going in the right direction. I think it's just, um, like I said, continue always teaching your child, letting them know where to draw the line, um, having that open relationship with them. I think when with our parents, it's different. Now, I think with my kids, it's a little different. You know, with our parents, it's a little harder to have those open conversations when you were younger. Um, I want to set that tone differently, sort of with my kids, where I want to be very open and honest and obviously teaching them teaching them things at a age appropriate level right not too much at once but as they get older kind of giving a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more right mm. so i guess spoon feeding i guess you would say um but yeah no i feel very hopeful i think that we are definitely in the step going in the right direction i think if we continue that with stuff like this and other things that they're seeing um and other things that reading a lot of reading too that's very important um, reading to them if they can't read and having them read books that you know we're not being taught these things in school so I feel like you're not teaching them at home they're not really gonna know right so yeah mm-hmm. yeah that's, that's what I think I feel the same as well as you say I still feel quite hopeful and as Stacy said like we're more better equipped to do it with our children I think like because me now we've actually been through this English system whereas our parents didn't actually go for it so we yeah. kind of know a lot of the pitfalls and the stereotypes that they try to put it in so we can guide our kids a lot better and also like um the school i went to i say predominantly like it's very rare you would see a black teacher actually my friend's wife she's actually the head mistress of the school now she's a black lady so i'm sure a lot of the kids there are gonna love to see like they can say oh i could be a head mistress and all these things mm-hmm. so yep. these role models mean a lot and as you say like um now especially like recently i think within the past I say within the past, I wouldn't even say 10 years, but I say 10 years, there's a lot more black businesses what I'm seeing opening up, all girls doing their thing, and a lot of, like, there's actually a girl I know, she started her own business, and, and like, she told her friends, so what, everybody started their own business doing different things, and they all support each other, so, you know, as long as they have to just support and stick together, and they all build up each other, each one teach one, so I'm yep. still quite hopeful, you know, so. For sure, for sure. Now, so. 
Yeah. 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 I agree. I follow a lot of black pages on Instagram and I'm just so proud of like just all the Ooh. black marriages, the black businesses, the black, like just everything. And I feel like there's so much of it, but we're now, especially with social media now, it's kind of bringing more of that to light because we weren't, we weren't seeing all these things before. Um, so yeah, like just even like black dads, you know what I mean? They get, they're so underrated. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like people don't give them enough credit. That's true. That's um, true. Um, but even you, like my cousin, like I know you for years, like, you know, we've been communicating back and forth for years and yeah, you've been yeah, so involved like with your kids and stuff. So it's just, I think that yeah, they don't yeah. get enough, right? They're more mm. talked yeah. about or down or, ooh, black men or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, there are true. some that are terrible, don't get me wrong, but there are some mm. amazing yeah, yeah. fathers, married yeah. or not married, whatever the yeah. situation might be. There's, there are tons yeah. of great, like amazing dads. Yeah. They don't leave their kids. They're sort with them. So. I, I feel like I want to do. I feel like I want to do something about that. I don't really know what it is, but I really want to kind of shed some light on these fathers because I don't think they get enough. Like honestly, and they do sure. do a lot. And I'm speaking from experience because of Terrence's involvement. With yeah. Kids. Mm-hmm. Um, I've seen my uncle with Bethany's dad with them. I've seen like just I've had a, a lot of pos- I've seen a lot of pay- positive male influence yeah. in my life that I don't feel like they get enough credit for for what they yeah. do. So that's the one thing that I feel like we need to start shedding a lot of light on, which is like yeah. black fathers out there who are doing what they need to do as opposed to always talking about the ones who are not yeah. the dead dudes who are not doing this. There's a lot of amazing ones out there. So that's mm-hmm. what I need to. Mm-hmm. highlight that so yeah. big up yourself cuz <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, yeah that's actually I'm really glad that you mentioned that honestly yeah. well, one of my of... friends I, I have mm-hmm. to say I mean, he's not here you don't know him but one of my friends Paul is like he's just an amazing father I always tell him I'm like I look up to me he's the same age as me but he's got like, like um, three kids I like I always tell him all the time like the preparation we need the stuff where he does everything when he's he, he's just amazing, isn't he? I'm not going to go into it, but like him, I actually look up to him and I tell him all the time, I feel like I see, he puts in like, like 200%. <laughs> he is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. oh, I, agree. Mm-hmm. I agree. I know a lot of fathers yeah. do that as well, like including, including Terrence, right? Mm-hmm. There's really mm-hmm. no like my job, mm-hmm. your job situation here. It's kind of like whoever gets to it, um, yeah. whenever we get to it, because we do have four kids and people are like, oh my God, you have four kids. I'm like, you know, it is busy. But it also yeah. helps when you have a partner or someone who's very involved. Yeah. Yeah. You are. Sorry, that's like my son screaming. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. Yeah. Cool. Aww. Well, do you guys have any last notes? Any last things you want to say? I just want to encourage us here who's on this chat and, you know, everyone else that we should continue to, yes, remember the past, but also celebrate our progress and celebrate you know the amazing accomplishments that are happening and you know have happened because i think it's it's so huge for us to build up each other and to speak positivity um in the midst of everyone else saying negative things about us we should you know speak a lot of positively positivity sorry and celebrate ourselves it's so important to celebrate ourselves yeah Yeah, i totally agree with that that's it celebrating loving ourselves and um yeah just being more, being positive, um, loving each other. Even I find that complimenting. I find that sometimes I don't know if it's like a cultural thing where we find it hard to compliment each other. Like if you see mm. someone else out there, like you know, it's like you can't say, "Wow, I like your hair," or "I like your shoes," or like yes. something. Like, as opposed to complimenting, you're kind of like side eyeing or whatever it might be. Um, so like I've taught my kids that too. I'm like, if you're confident in yourself and you know who you are, it's easy to compliment someone else. Um, I remember Naya saying to me a couple days ago they were in the car because you know they can't go anywhere so we were they were sitting in the car waiting for me and I went into the car and I came back out and she when I came back up she's like oh man mom I just saw these two black girls they were so pretty like one and so she's like describing them to a T and I'm like you saw this for like two seconds man like how are you them like this but you know the fact that at 11 she can recognize that and be able to say that to me I, that made me feel good because I've always told them, I'm like, you know, if you see someone that's pretty or you like something that's about true. them, you can say it or you can that's tell them. You don't have to do that. Yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. Oh, or you whatever. Right? If you're confident in yourself. You have no no issues with you. I said, when you're confident about you, you're free to compliment someone else really <laughs> and be confident about it. So Absolutely. I think yeah. there's so sending more positive vibes, I guess I would say, as people of color, like always, it doesn't all, mm-hmm. like you can, 
drop a like a quick positive thing on your some piece of picture <laughs> post or whatever just because That's right it. um i don't think it always has to be super negative <laughs> which i feel yeah. like i don't know it's all that stemming back from slavery the kind of like you said get rid of all that burden and that negative stuff we've had to deal with uh -huh. you know a little bit lighter and be more free and friendly yeah Oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching. Please check out their Instas. They are my amazing cousins. And also thanks to them for letting me interview them. So leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And some articles will be down below. So feel free to check them out. Take care. Stay safe. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I don't know. My, 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 um, I'm back. <laughs> like, I don't know what's happening. <laughs>